The reactor was located 35 miles from downtown Los Angeles. It was called the Sodium Reactor Experiment, or SRE, built for the government by Atomics International. It began operating in 1957. The accident happened in 1959. This is the old Santa Susana Field Lab, which functioned from the 1940s to the early 2000s. A lot of work was done here uh, with rocket fuel, liquid metal experiments, and nuclear power reactors. Today, we will be diving into one of the largest and most disastrous nuclear disasters in American history, hidden right here in the hills of Simi Valley, only about 30 miles away from Los Angeles. A disaster that has exposed potentially millions of people to harmful radiation and which many people believe continues to contaminate the surrounding area. This series of nuclear disasters occurred throughout the 50s and 60s, but wouldn't be exposed until the late 70s. Blue skies are turning red, sun gone down upon my head, up beyond that mountain range, deep into a halo. The old Snap 10A reactor, a total of 10 reactors, functioned here at one time or another, including the first ever commercial grade nuclear power reactor in the world, which actually powered the city of Moorpark for a time. Santa Susana. Welcome to Waste Media. Today we will be covering the infamous Santa Susana Field Laboratory. High in the hills between Simi Valley and the San Fernando Valley, a vast 2,800 acre facility once lived here. It all began in 1947, when North American Aviation, one of the giants of post-war aerospace, chose this remote destination for experiments deemed too dangerous for populated areas. At the time, the surrounding hills were made up of grazing cattle and orange groves. It was the perfect place for a secret project that would go on to affect the area for generations. I'm trying to get as close as I can to where the field lab used to be. And you can see there's a bunch of homes around right now. But when this was first built, this place was just a rugged mountains. There was not really anyone here. That's why I was selected. So secretive. So let's try to get closer. The original site was divided into four zones. Areas one, two, and three were devoted to rocket testing, propulsion systems, and experimental missiles. Area four was tucked deep within the complex and was where something far more secret took place, nuclear research. In the early years of the Cold War, the Santa Susana Laboratory was a lab of the future. Rocket engines were tested here that would later go on to be used in the Thor and Jupiter ballistic missiles and later the Saturn V, which later sent Apollo astronauts to the moon. But while these engines roared to life, within the hills a separate branch of North American aviation, called Atomics International, was quietly working on civilian nuclear power. It housed 10 experimental reactors, facilities to fabricate uranium and plutonium fuel elements, and a hot lab that was used for cutting and analyzing irradiated fuel. One of these reactors was the Radium Reactor Experiment, or SRE. It was the first reactor in the United States to supply electricity to a commercial grid. At 7.30 p.m. November 12, 1957, when for the first time in the United States, an entire community was illuminated by electricity generated by an atomic reactor. Enrico Fermi once looked at a reactor and said, wouldn't it be wonderful if it could cure the common cold? Here at Moore Park, a chain reaction that started with him washed the dishes and lit a book for a small boy to read. In July of 1957, this experimental reactor lit up the streetlights in the nearby small town of Moore Park. It was hailed as a triumph of science. But just two years later, the same reactor would become the site of a disaster that no one outside the lab would hear about for decades. In July of 1959, operators noticed rising temperatures inside the core. The liquid sodium coolant, supposed to keep the reactor stable, had become contaminated with uranium. The SRE was cooled not with water as most reactors now are, but with sodium, a liquid metal. This animation, on a government film never shown in public before, shows the sodium filling up the reactor going up between the radioactive fuel rods. When the fuel rods partially melted in 1959, the sodium absorbed the most dangerous of the materials produced by the accident, 
so they stayed in the reactor. Inside, 13 out of the 43 fuel rods began to melt. America's first nuclear meltdown had begun. And unlike modern nuclear plants, the SRE had no concrete containment dome, just a steel building surrounded by canyons and brushland. Engineers tried to vent the reactor to relieve pressure, but nothing worked. For weeks, radioactive gases escaped into the air, carried wherever the wind was blowing, likely spreading throughout Southern California, and definitely most of Los Angeles. The official report released claimed the radiation released was minimal and harmless. But decades later, former employees told a very different story. One of them, technician John Pace, was inside the building when the meltdown occurred. He remembered opening large doors to release pressure and seeing a blue haze drift out of the reactor hall. He said, quote, we were venting it straight into the atmosphere. We didn't know how dangerous it was, end quote. For nearly 20 years, the public never heard a word. There was never an evacuation order, no sirens and no headlines. The Atomic Energy Commission quietly classified the event and moved on. There was multiple other accidents that left the soil contaminated. I just spoke to a, a local here and he said, do not drink the well water. So clearly, and that's the first person I talked to here. So everyone here definitely knows about this and probably have family members who maybe died from cancer all types of stuff i'm pretty sure the cancer rates here are super high the soil when it rains a lot of this runoff goes down these hills into the residential areas so it's a beautiful place it's super nice it's getting dark now but don't drink the water out here if you guys saw my other video about spawn ranch it's not very far from here maybe 15 minutes down the road, another part of the Santa Susana Pass. And I'll have the link for that video right here, or right here. This wasn't the only major accident that would occur at the Santa Susana Field Lab. In 1957, a fire broke out within the hot lab, the facility used to handle irradiated nuclear fuel. In 1964 and again in 1969, Experimental SNAP reactors suffered major fuel damage, releasing tons of radioactive materials inside the facility. And in 1971, a sodium-potassium coolant fire spread radiation throughout another section of Area 4 once again. Some of the most reckless contamination at the site came from something less dramatic than the reactors. The sodium burn pits. These were open-air pits dug into the sandstone where workers would dump sodium-coated metal parts after tests. These materials were then set on fire. Workers would later testify that radioactive waste, solvents, and chemicals were also burned at the site. One former worker, James Palmer, would later tell reporters that out of the 27 men on his crew, 22 would later die of cancer. He recalled coming home from work and kissing his wife goodnight, only to burn her lips from the chemicals still on his breath. Between the 1950s and 1970s, roughly 30,000 rocket tests were conducted here. The whole time, the lab's radioactive and chemical footprint was spreading into the soil and water beneath them. When the rocket engines finally stopped being tested, a grim reality set in. This had quietly become one of the most contaminated pieces of land in America. In Area 4, the nuclear zone, where the reactor had once suffered a meltdown, the soil was found to be laced with radioactive isotopes, all known to increase the risk of cancer. Even plutonium-239 was found, one of the deadliest substances known to science, with a half-life of 24,000 years. But radiation wasn't the only danger that now covered the land. Across areas 1, 2, and 3, the soil and groundwater became infused with rocket-era chemicals, TCE, a powerful solvent used to wash down engines. Tens of thousands of gallons seeped directly into unlined pits, drifting downward into groundwater plumes, thousands of times above the safe limit. Lead, mercury, and nickel were a few more among the many heavy metals found. These contaminants didn't remain where they were spilled. Testing showed that they had moved through the sandstone into seasonal streams and groundwater. 
eventually making its way into the neighborhoods that now surround the lab. In the 1990s and 2000s, government scientists, independent researchers, and volunteer citizen groups began uncovering contamination in locations outside the fence line, on ranches, in stormwater channels, in the sediments of Bell Canyon, Dayton Canyon, Runkle Canyon, and Woolsey Canyon. Low-level radioactive isotopes were found in off-site soil. Heavy metals were detected in runoff paths leading directly into backyards. Some residents hired their own geologists and radiological experts. Others dug through public databases, testing wells, sampling household dust, and mapping cancer cases by street and block. Over time, a troubling pattern emerged elevated cancer rates in people living near the Santa Susana Field Lab. Some findings suggested at least 260 cancer cases could have been linked to the lab. Residents living within two miles of the lab had a 60% higher cancer rate than those living five miles away. As if this wasn't horrible enough, things were about to get even worse. A lot of times these fires will actually lay down at night, giving the firefighters the opportunity to get ahead of them and start to get a handle on them. This one, totally different. The high winds, the extremely difficult terrain. Has In November of 2018, the Woolsey fire tore through the Santa Susana Field Lab, burning 80% of the contaminated site. The very areas where nuclear accidents, burn pits, and chemical dumping had occurred, were now on fire. And as the fire consumed everything, it released what had been trapped for decades. Colleen and Chuck, there is mounting evidence that the fire started at the Santa Susana Field Lab, about 1,300 feet from the site of a partial nuclear meltdown back in 1959. It's an area that is still highly contaminated with radioactive waste. The wind carried the smoke east towards the San Fernando Valley and south towards Thousand Oaks and Malibu potentially exposing millions of people. A study later found radioactive microparticles, chemically unique to the Santa Susana lab, in dust and ash up to nine miles away, at levels that were 19 times higher than normal. Today, the lab is quiet. I was unable to get past the gates. The land is now largely owned by Boeing. Boeing acquired the assets of Rockwell International's aerospace defense business in 1996. This included the Rocketdyne operations, which ran the lab, which included the Santa Susana Field Lab property. Ownership meant Boeing inherited both the land and liability for contamination in many cases. Boeing owns the majority of the land. They own about 2,400 acres of the 2,850-acre site. NASA also owns a smaller section of the lab, 409 acres of Area 2 and 41 acres of Area 1. The U.S. Department of Energy controls the radioactive portion of the site where the meltdown occurred. In 2010, NASA and the Department of Energy signed legally binding agreements, promising to clean their portions of the lab to background levels, the strictest possible standard. But Boeing did not sign. Instead, they argued for a cleanup based on risk rather than removal, a standard that is far less stringent, leaving far more contamination in the soil. In 2022, the California Department of Toxic Substances Control signed a quiet behind closed doors settlement with Boeing, one many residents saw as a betrayal. The agreement required Boeing to clean chemical contamination to a residential standard, but did not force a full removal of radioactive contaminants. Large portions of the site's nuclear legacy could remain buried in place. Boeing insists the land will never be developed, pledging to preserve the entire property as permanent open space. As I drove home, I was shocked by how beautiful this land is. It's really a shame that one of the most unique landscapes in Southern California will now live with these scars for far longer than any of us will be around. For decades, the Santa Susana Field Laboratory operated in silence. Rocket tests, nuclear reactors, burn pits, all conducted within these secret hills of Southern California. Year by year, residents moved in closer and closer. Today, thousands of people call this area home. But how many know the true history of the land they love? How many people have been exposed? How many lives changed by an invisible force that lurks beneath the very ground they walk on? Will we ever know the true impact of this disaster? 
will we ever see the true scale. Truly the superpower which man has released from within the atom's heart is not one, but many giants. One is the warrior, the destroyer. Another is the engineer seeking to provide vast quantities of energy to run the world's machines. Another is the farmer helping to better feed tomorrow's world. On man's wisdom, on his firmness in the use of that power depends now the future of his children and his children's children in the new world of the atomic age. Hopefully a mountain lion doesn't run out on me right now. And check out the Patreon.